Thank you so much, Prashant, for joining us today. I appreciate your time. I appreciate uh, you have uh, coming on this uh, weekend. So thank you so much once again. It's, it's been great, uh, like uh, welcoming me uh, here. And this was this is my first time, like uh, when I am in front of everyone on a, on camera. Generally, I used to do a video on background, but this is my first time. Thank you, Minder, for this opportunity. I think so many opportunities will come starting from here yes. uh, on camera. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, my pleasure. And again, thank you so much. And uh, uh, now let's start uh, the basic uh, session. Uh, can you please uh, provide a bit of your introduction, Prashant? Uh, like yeah. your experience and uh, uh, your work culture and all. Yeah. So like uh, I have around uh, eight and a half years of experience working in service now and I have started my career in service now itself. Like in 2015, uh, if, April, I have started working in service now. So initially I was working on some other things like Java and uh, sometime I got a chance for BMC remedy training as well. But I like uh, rejected those because a lot of installations uh, were required when BMC Remedy was there. So we have to install something on server and then we have to build and then we have to again connect with those uh, servers and we have to retrieve everything and do work. So I have like uh, told them, okay, I don't want to work on BMC Remedy. You can provide me something okay. new. What is new in the market? Uh, so my manager told, okay, so I know a better thing uh, that is new to the market and you will not uh, get much of training there because it is a, a new thing generally. So I told, okay, I am fine with that. So initially they have told, okay, there is a, a tool which is service now and you have to work on that. So we, we were just researching about service now, what is service now and how we can get into it. Like this is a good for our future. Like we were uh, like around four or five members and we were in dilemma, what will happen in future? <laughs> okay. Uh, if I work in service now, what will happen for us? It's not like that. It will close in two years, three years. Right. And what will happen after that? Yeah. Because we were not much aware what exactly service now will take us in future. Because it's not kind of uh, some language thing like Java or anything. Yeah. So we got good. some. In yeah. And we got interest uh, due to our manager. He told like you should do this. Uh, definitely there is a very good scope for this and like uh, thanks to the, uh, my manager as well uh, yeah so he provided us that opportunity and he told us you should complete admin certification in within one month like he forced us to complete certifications okay and, and literally we finished our certification within a month like four or five people we were there and we have completed those admin certifications Without complete training, we got very lesser training. And at that point of time, ServiceNow instance was not much mature. So uh, while learning, we got some lot of issues or it, it was so much time consuming initially. So it was really good learning from then and what we are right now. So there is a huge difference between this system, how it was earlier and how it is now. So okay. I have like this complete uh, years, like I have worked on ServiceNow itself, like it's been eight and a half years. And like uh, initially, like our motivation was like one of the person from ServiceNow. So he is Pradeep Sharma, you also know him. Right, so right, he, I know. So he was the community leader, like on earlier days and so many days he was as a leader. So we were like uh, looking him like, and uh, he also told there is a good scope. Uh, initial days, like I have pinged him. Uh, so how is service now and uh, whether it, it has some future so that we can be more concentrated about the service now. So like we were much confident because at that point of time, nobody in community was answering the question except Pradesh Sarma. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that time when it was Aspen, in Berlin, at Calgary also. So that time, community is not that much mature. Only yeah. two experts are there and rest all are learners, beginners. I yeah. remember that time. Yeah, so we like uh, were thinking, okay, we have to wait for one day, two day for getting such answers. 
at that time. But these days, like people learning and they have a lot of resources to learn as well. A lot of our community people like have YouTube channels on various things. Like uh, we, we, our community like Dev MVPs and community MVPs, those people are already like there helping those people and getting answers instantly. So this is very good uh, right, right, this phase because those people can learn service now at a very good pace. And there are a lot of people, they are learning it in 10, 15 days or one month and they are just starting working in service now. So there were a lot of people like in LinkedIn, okay, how is service now? And even freshers also contact me, like uh, shall we start working on uh, service now or shall we start about uh, learning service now? So they are like very good on that part. Right. That's great. Yeah. Uh, so I must say that uh, you did all the research before entering into service now and it is uh, giving good results now, right? Yeah. So definitely it was good experience like initial one year like i was uh, not much confidence uh, like uh, i should stay in service now or not but uh, because we i have got a very good project in starting itself like it was on field service management on my 2015 on september october i think it was first it was started but it was so much complex like uh, everything was completely customized at that time because a lot of feature was not available. Right now, those features are configuration available in service now. But at that time, we were not having a lot of features available. So we have created yeah. those as a custom, like on buttons or reporting side. And many things like uh, they have made us make customized everything. So it was a good experience. And it uh, we had a good exposure on that. Uh, because right. yeah so two people were working and we were uh, so much like uh, thinking whether we can do this project or not because our company told okay we, we will lose the project if client uh, don't agree or initial performance so he will not give us the project and those Australian client person came and he like provided us the requirement and we have done it in seven days like and he was so much uh, impressed like we could not do in Four, five years and these guys has done within like seven to ten days they have performed and they have provided us the functionality so it, it was very good like uh, from that time uh, that was very good like uh, assessment from the client for us after that i was just working working but uh, that appreciation was so good in the initial days and then it motivated us so it brought us a lot of projects in our company at that point of time. Same company has provided us like four or five projects together. And then we have worked on custom applications. And uh, yeah, custom applications, we have worked a lot in initial days. And those are the same thing. Okay, great, great. Uh, so amazing experience and amazing things. Uh, let's move to the next question, uh, Prashant. Like yes, what yes. inspired you to be a creator or... A uh, educator of service now. I see your channel Learn IT and you are getting very good stuff from the you know long from a long time. So what was your inspiration in that? Uh, uh, so my inspiration is definitely like uh, we all people are there in community and I see a lot of people like uh, in freshers. Just example I'm taking for freshers or mm -hmm. one year two year experience. So those people like uh, were struggling a lot because. Uh, like I have more than five year experience now, so we, uh, company generally tells us, okay, you have to guide this much of people and you have to guide or you have to train this much of people. And last organization, you and I have trained a couple of people like uh, around 25 or 30 people. So I got to know like uh, what is the gap and we, where do they struggle okay. actually. Yeah. Okay. So like, okay. yeah, because uh, there was an assessment also. Uh, with uh, some group of people or some senior leadership was also there and like uh, some discussion happened and people were telling okay we have some issues uh, where we are struggling in scenario based uh, things and some people are struggling with very basic things but they don't ask generally with senior okay what they will tell like uh, we don't know this and you don't know this <laughs> so there people generally don't ask uh, with uh, directly with uh, any of the senior people 
like if suppose they ask some basic question and they will sound as silly so like that part also uh, taught me like uh, i should um, do something for this kind of people it's not just my organization it could be whole community who might be struggling so i was not sure but as soon as like i have started providing my uh, videos so people are like okay you are providing good thing and uh, we are we are going to know lot of things which we don't know actually because they were never trained even to after 2 3 years 4 years experience people also are learning something new uh, from those videos anything like just a 10 second part or 5 second part so that that is good for them because they are learning something new so that thing also made me think like i should do something and as well as uh, there was a developer mvp thing so uh, on 20 yeah 2021 i thought what is this like developer mvp community mvp lot of people started posting like uh, i was already late in 21 so i thought i will uh, generate something in 2022 so after lot of thinking and it was like a bit nervous in starting how should i start what i will do what i will tell whether they will like or they will not like so i thought what i will do and <laughs> whether uh, they, they will make us sound or what will happen so i thought no problem i should start something a very basic video and let's see the response what is uh, what we are getting from people outside there so okay. this is that that thing like people are sharing lot of information through dev mvp and community mvp so i thought let me try out a way if suppose i can do also thing same kind of thing so i started okay. creating yeah so those videos and as well as uh, you see sometimes i post my blogs as well blog also okay yeah the amazing initiative and lots of people are getting benefited and when we teach when we you know create a video it's not about sharing we are also learning a lot of things yeah because we have to make sure that people will learn and they will learn 100% correct so yeah. we are also learning and that's what we are sharing right and one of the best thing is like uh, so the communication skill like uh, previously my communication skill was not that strong like and i have create, i have been creating videos from uh, like one and a half year or two year so it it is giving me lot of confidence uh, like whether it is company things like uh, to represent on any app or project so it is very good for me because it has provided me lot of benefit on communication side and as well as learning side and as well as lot of people generally know me in community okay this is the person who is uh, providing some solutions yeah. and videos and and there is also some time where people ask questions on whatsapp okay how i will resolve and we don't have time also right <laughs> so that is also a, like i find a challenge but uh, because as we are seniors and we also know like lot of opportunity and Uh, projects are pending uh, based upon us and uh, those companies are telling okay you have to do this you are working on multiple places so we have to deliver the things so sometimes right. we might not reply but definitely uh, those questions are replied when whenever uh, we are having some time on questions so that that point also is uh, fine uh, i generally answer those questions lot of people and it it provides me good benefit because they generally after some time, period of time they also come back okay i want a requirement this one and uh, i want to fulfill these kind of requirement so i tell them the solution and uh, this, that has been great for me because those people at least think okay we can get some solution or directly connecting with me or applying to community questions right right amazing very good Uh, so let's move to the next question prashant uh, i see you have lots of uh, you know certifications eight mainline certifications and 21 micro certification so can you please uh, like educate us the importance and uh, mostly the process of getting these certifications so okay. previously it was different right but now it is changed yeah. completely yeah. changed so if you have like please uh, share some light on it yeah sure 
so uh, like uh, we have lot of categories in certification side uh, if we talk about the uh, service now so they generally uh, tell is there as a credit uh, accreditation uh, accreditation of a lot of things and some they are calling it as a certification as well and some we have micro certifications so uh, we have these kind of things uh, it is like that suppose uh, we are concentrated about some basic learning in service now and okay. we are having those micro certifications things or accreditation where people can just learn small things and they can uh, check their knowledge whether they are having some basic knowledge about that uh, uh, topic or not suppose I, if i talk about performance analytics so mm -hmm. we have micro certification for that and as well as mainline certification so right. if we talk about micro certification so it is very basic detail uh, there it will be asked or basic information you can like create a dashboard create a report and then you can provide some analytics things there breakdowns and indicators okay. but in mainline certification side you have to learn complete course and a, a deeper you have to go more deeper dive in, inside those uh, topics and then there comes mainline certification so it is the step like if you are confident uh, like you can learn more and you can certify on uh, mainline certification so you can go after that for mainline certifications okay like uh, the benefit of certification is definitely there because uh, if suppose i am working on uh, suppose I'm working on ITSM. Now, you don't want to work in ITSM. You want to work in, suppose, HRSC. Now, what will okay. happen? Now, new project came in HRSC. Now, that client will ask, okay, we want certified people. Okay. So, that point right. of time, if you are already certified, if even if you have not worked on HRSC, you will be involved in that project, generally. Okay. Because generally, company will think, okay, uh, he has done course and he has completed the training. So they don't want to give training as well. So okay. if they have ma mainline certification, they will be directly involved in that project. And those uh, like com uh, like our manager or team leader, whoever is there, and they will be happy, okay, we have uh, this much certified people and we can align to this project. So this is the basic uh, benefit which generally people have of doing so basically so so basically we can say like uh, in order to short listing uh, your profile and basically all yeah. clients also need people who are certified so yes. if, we, if we think that it does not benefit obviously it is benefiting because yeah. we are getting the work we are getting aligned to the project based on these certifications if there yeah. is a people if there is a person who is not satisfied but good knowledge and if there is a person who is certified, so obviously client will pick at the very first time the certified one because yeah. they have accreditation and all. Yes. Okay. So, okay. They got it. So all the people who are listening to this podcast, uh, you must know that certifications are good and you have to do it. Not all, but whatever are relevant to your project, whatever is relevant to your interest, please do so. Right. Yeah, suppose uh, if I talk about my uh, certifications, like I am having eight uh, mainline certifications. So uh, this is the same concept, like I have worked on various modules, separate modules. So I generally think, okay, I should work on new modules every time I get a new project. Okay. So that is, <clears throat> so that is my strategy generally behind getting more certification, accreditations. And okay. uh, yeah. So what will happen if suppose I have done a couple of certifications so I can get any kind of project apart uh, those eight certifications which I have done, right? And it's it's like very good for me also in profile you can display, okay, we have this much of certifications, right? right? And uh, this will increase the value of our organization as well on a higher level because uh, they can show like we have this much of certified people on various uh, technologies or various products of service now like HRSC, CSM and a lot of things. Now they have segregated it in many certifications. Previously, there was basically certified system administration and uh, certified application developer, developer. and implementation. implementation yeah, so there was those three. Yeah, 
so on those initial days also i have completed csa and cis but okay. yeah and after that like uh, last to last organization i was working so they told we don't want certification you can work how you are working so my certification got expired that those old ones <laughs> yeah we can do it again no problem Some yeah technical part I heard that uh, you are a technical <clears throat> expert in integration, right? So, can you give me one example where we can transform the functional requirement into technical requirement uh, with respect to uh, integration? Uh, one example so that people understand, okay, how to do this transition. Okay. So, uh, like, uh, suppose if I take an example, uh... Suppose we have one one third party application we are having weather forecast application and okay, okay any any of them uh, X Y Z application so we generally have some APIs and uh, token available for that uh, application to be integrated from uh, different tools so initially like uh, we have to see whether like uh, we can integrate uh, the that third party application with the application we are doing, like example, uh, ServiceNow. So we have to integrate that with ServiceNow. And now what is the requirement? Requirement is that like, uh, it is providing us a lot of updates. Uh, suppose uh, we have a rain coming on in for forecast. So it can just provide the message, okay, the rain is in forecast. So rain will come in sometime or some wind will come. Generally, like uh, if you take this as an example on those areas where generally flood comes. So this this, okay. this this application is very useful for those places. So not for our side, like uh, uh, Northern India part, but on Southern India part, we used to see generally there is a lot of uh, natural things, natural disasters happens there, like flood is coming and uh, wind is blowing, lot of wind and people is uh, impacted with those. So like uh, it's kind of app where we can uh, inform those people outside like okay. what is happening. Uh, so they can, uh, they can in, like suppose NGOs can be uh, notified, okay, whether we are having those kind of uh, weather forecast. So they can work with that local uh, individuals and see how they can uh, protect those kind of people before the calamities are uh, coming. So we are using suppose any app. So now we have to integrate with our system with service now. So we have to see the factor like uh, what is required on service now side generally to get the details from those uh, third party applications. So first of all, we have to get uh, those endpoints uh, from those applications. And then after getting endpoints, we have to generate those rest messages in our system. And we have to provide some authentication methods there, uh, whichever authentication okay. you, are, you have to use there. And you can, and those APIs is also available, suppose, for that application. So we can uh, use those APIs. API generally having some details like uh, token IDs are generated while we are creating REST message in our system. So some token ID is generated when we configure the account on third party application. So that okay. token, will be used for our uh, REST message thing. And then we have to see what all details we have to take on description side, what we are getting, like some rain forecast or uh, some flood forecast is happening. So that information will be coming on service now. So okay. if, and that information we are storing in some table, like uh, any existing table, or you can create custom applications also related to that. So we can do both the things and like we can uh, add those data on those applications. And after those data is in, stored in ServiceNow system, we can notify a different group of people so they can protect those smaller areas where generally okay. uh, top management cannot approach. So this is the like a uh, real scenario example. Uh, I okay. have to, uh, this generally don't have on our client requirement, but I was just taking as a natural calamities example. Yeah, so that, experience. Uh, yeah. yeah, good example because uh, you are connecting the functionality, you are connecting the 
technical things, all things uh, together. So this is a good example. Yeah. I hope people will understand it properly and uh, got uh, much more knowledge from it. Uh, so very well, uh, Prashant. Let's move to the next question. So I see you have worked in, uh, you know, uh, many. So I see you have worked on various companies, and right yeah. now you're working in a, a service now partner company. So yeah. what is the difference between working in, uh, you know, some kind of uh, service company and a service now partner company? So what atmosphere? What is the decorum when you work for a particular service now partner company? Ah, uh, <clears throat> so it is very good experience. So currently, if you uh, see, like I am working for Enable a Fujitsu company. So like yeah. uh, uh, it has been like uh, more than one year and experience was amazing. Like uh, uh, this experience literally I have got uh, last to last organization because that was product based company. So same kind okay. of experience I am getting here. Like uh, no much uh, pressure from senior like you have to do this and you have to do that. And no any dependency like uh, manager will come, okay, you are, how much hours you are working or how much hours you are not working. And he he don't even uh, tell like what to do, what not to do because we are already that mature. So like uh, here people generally they don't uh, interfere the people who are working already in the system because they are already working in their good pace and uh, with their mind mindset like whatever they are having so they are working at a very good uh, environment things so we don't like feel uh, like so much of work pressure or so much of like work which we have uh, uh, like those clients aligned to our company so it's really amazing here and it's not like that senior junior so here every people are same like whether he is senior okay. consultant or normal consultant or any trainee so here all people are same just the designation or experience might be different but uh, everybody is considered as the same person whether he okay. is anyone yeah and okay. here the be best thing is like you can approach anyone in the company whether he is okay. director or any one person like delivery head and, and he will connect with you on same day and he will okay. ask you okay what problem you are facing and what projects like uh, are you facing any challenges for your project any technical challenges or any different challenges like uh, your personal problems as well so you they ask everything so what what you are facing and what they can do uh, to make those okay. employee life uh, better so they ask everything and we do have a monthly hr connect where our delivery head comes and they ask okay what kind of problems you are suffering or do you have any problem in any project you can you can just specify what problems are there and one of okay. the best thing here like <clears throat> suppose uh, i am not interested in certain project i am working so you can directly okay. approach those delivery head and you can tell, okay, uh, like I'm not interested in this project uh, because this project, uh, there is example, there is only catalog item I'm working from longer days. Now I okay. want to change my project to work in a more uh, customized environment or more new things in service now. Okay. So, okay. so they, they will take care about that. It's not like that same day they will assign you different thing, but definitely those things will be taken care in your future and they okay. will check whether if some some place like any opportunity is there so they can be fit in you uh, like in another project so it's very good here and like uh, service base is that is also fine but uh, the difference is there we get a lot of uh, pressure also work pressure generally because what is happening, we don't have so much of service now resources on, on service based side. Okay. And uh, those, those senior people are like burdened with a lot of projects. And they are working like whole day and till midnight they are working. So I, I have my personal experience working from 9 a.m. to 12 a.m. So <laughs> yeah, that was okay. really hectic on those kind of companies. So like uh, that, they should also think about like employees uh somewhat whatever like uh, they are doing so it is uh they are spending their day and nights like nine hours the time is generally for any individual to work 
but they are working 12 hours 13 hours 14 hours so it's kind of much hectic because those work life balance is breaking on those kind of things happening right. so this this is the difference uh, on these companies like uh, the company which is partner and like especially like service based generally it is happening uh, most of the places same kind of things are happening and so this is like i personally don't like it uh, to overhead okay. any person uh, for a lot of work you should like hire a good quality people also so how much technically it is different uh, in current uh, you know service now partner companies how much you know exposure you have to various new technologies which are there right now in service now technology wise uh, so uh, for my experience if i tell uh, we can build uh, any kind of thing in service now if i uh, tell from my personal uh, feeling we can build anything in service now like because if we have to do integration side so any kind of integration is possible these days because we are getting spokes also generated in service now and now even in new release they have provided you can create your own spoke as well and then you can use it across the system so okay. i feel like uh, we can use a lot of uh, third party things or a lot of new things even though automation with hardware also is possible with service now system i have seen that also uh, in some time back uh, from service now developer meet itself so uh, prashant uh, means not this one i am asking like uh, uh, within the service now partner company how much exposure you are getting with respect to other technologies which are you know new recent so they are getting a lot of projects with respect to you know latest technology so are you getting that yeah. much exposure with their or that's what uh, i'm asking here yeah so like uh, we are getting like suppose uh, right now there was one hackathon was organized by service now itself uh, for anz reason and uh, okay. there we there like they have mentioned like you can use generative ai uh, for your uh, implementation whichever application you are going to build and you are going to participate there so there they have mentioned you can use generative ai uh, things and inside our uh, even in our organization also they are like working on new things like uh, okay. we do have this uh, generative ai and uh, right now also virtual agent with predictive intelligence okay these, these are these are new things like uh, which you recently i will be working on because recently okay. i have got last week this and uh, this project i have got uh, like uh, we have to work virtual agent with predictive intelligence Okay. previously we had yeah we were using some basic search there but it was not working uh, up to the mark so we have to work with uh, predictive intelligence and see how our results are coming uh, while we are using with uh, virtual agents okay. so and here whatever new things are coming in service now definitely there is a scope of uh, working because we do have our uh, separate team who are working on particular products not just only for client uh, products or client uh, projects so we are working for our uh, applications as well so if you okay. if we have to participate here so in current organization we do have our innovation team as well so we okay. can so their people are working for new technologies and if anyone of any one person in the company wants to join that team and they have to work in new thing they are completely open and they are completely open with your advice with your working whatever you bring they are most welcoming everybody okay. in the company oh, great great Amazing. and even these these days yeah. we were having one of one of the application which service now has acquired as well uh, okay. recently from our company so there was okay. that was also a huge achievement from our like uh, leaders or team who, who have worked on that and our innovation team has worked on that so they are like highly appreciated on all the levels and okay. they are working on many many new things with service now on the, uh, various projects uh, or product building so they are already working on this and we also get a time to time some new things to learn uh, from those innovation teams 
बिकॉज वॉट इज हैपनिंग हियर वॉट एवर न्यू थिंग इज डेवलप्ड वी आर हैविंग ए मंथली कनेक्ट वेर वट एवर न्यू थिंग इन अवर कंपनी एवरी टेक्निकल एवरी टेक्निकल पर्सन विल गेट टू नो वट एवर न्यू थिंग्स इज डेवलप्ड फ्रॉम अवर कंपनी ऑफ एनी टीम and they can directly approach them like you have developed and our client is looking for same kind of requirement so it's very like a uh, transparency here on learning okay. side on your idea side on your innovation side or whatever things we are having we can directly approach our delivery heads and we can tell okay i have an idea and we can do this thing as this way so they are completely fine with that and they just ask okay can you create some design can you create some functional or technical aspect of this uh, idea and then we can look and we can assign some team so that he will work with you or some person okay. will work with you so they are completely open with new ideas here so it's okay. not we are just uh, stopped on project side it's not like that here so that's why yeah. like i I find this company different than other organizations. Right. Frankly, I mean, I'm saying. Yeah, right. These are your experience, right? And you are definitely sharing it in a very good way. Okay, so let's move to the next question. Uh, when you started service now, what was your biggest challenge? Not now means uh, maybe now also, but um, specifically for the freshers, like uh, when you started from the beginning. So, what was your biggest challenge? If you can. Uh, recall that one yeah sure i have uh, so much of uh, uh, issues initially because our uh, service now instance was not uh, that matured if suppose for an example we are sending an email we are not receiving an email and we are waiting for longer time okay now we will receive now we will receive but we have to ignore that and we have to move forward uh, trigger again once if you will get so right. it's like that we were getting so much of uh, issues while in the system in initial days but uh, we have recovered through that uh, but it it was so much of time consuming and if suppose we are getting any requirement uh, at that point of time and we are not aware how best practice can be achieved so we were not okay. getting solution in community generally that time and uh, we used to write like business rule in initial days and we were not get uh, we are not getting the solution so even if there was one uh, like one or two business rule we are taking four five days to write these one or two business rules at initial days because uh, we were not getting solutions in the community uh, whatever is asked in our projects so that time we were facing lot of challenges uh, how we can proceed this in a best way and we were a team like three four people working so we were like uh, discussing with each other and then we are building a solution based on our old logics like java and all so that okay. kind of thinking we were using and then our manager our manager told don't go in that way because you okay. will be you will be stuck more if you think uh, on older ways so that is fine logic is fine, same everywhere but this is service now and you have to think like how you can make those things better in service now and how it will work so like uh, we changed our way and we we like whatever solutions we are coming at that time that time also like we were posting those answer uh, questions and answers in community so that uh, uh, at that 2015 also we were posting something on community with our code and so that other people don't struggle with those things okay suppose like there was an example we were creating some uh, calculations like a uh, calculator thing kind of thing any in initial training days so we were building some calculation based thing so okay. we were struggling a lot uh, on that and we have written a lot of business rules uh, for working those uh, requirement or training based things okay so it was more struggling than in project it was more it's not less when we got a project it was a lot and we were struggling to find solutions uh, like uh, very uh, like we don't have uh, anything in community we were just having our developers.servicenow.com that's it right. and we have so, to... so basically you are saying like uh, resources were very less at the when you yeah. started uh, so yeah. now we have recovered that great 
amazing experience uh, so let's move to the next question prashant like uh, uh, when you say let's say there is a fresher so when is the time he should start integration so when you say he is ready okay. for the integration to start integration so okay there are many freshers listening to this right so just wanted to know yeah. they have knowledge so they think they have knowledge and they are working on uh, pdi as well so when is the time so that they can start integration if suppose uh, like uh, they are able to create like they are well aware how to uh, like work with forms in the system like on integration we generally have some fields which is required to create whenever we are creating some integration so on form designing side or form level side he should know everything and okay if if, if he is uh, aware about transform map and uh, rest message thing so if he is if he is knowing about what is rest message and what is soap message he should be uh, like uh, more uh, confident of building integration but what happens is like initial initially fresher can't do that because he has to get some uh, service now insight as well how it will work in service now and what all things are required in service now to work with integration suppose form form level changes business rules transform map so these are the okay. three things which is generally used in integration side so these three topics first of all he has to be more confident okay. on these topics so he can cover those topics suppose like uh, if he is doing administration part he will complete one month two month or three months generally maximum and next three months he can learn some advanced concept like uh, transform map or rest rest messages thing and business rules so these things if he is more confident and he has learned it in a very good manner in next one or two months then i think the fresher can also do integration within 5 or 6 months it doesn't uh, matter about fresher thing if and one more thing if fresher is able to take those things uh, in one or two months itself he can do in one or two months as well because okay. i person i personally did one of the integration from bmc remedy in just two months of experience in 2015 that too and uh, we have used soap messages for that initially and we have integrated our incident management with bmc remedy incident management so okay. you should just have the knowledge and the confident about the knowledge which you are having then i think you are capable of doing integration because uh, if you go much on deeper side of service now sometime you will find like integration is easier than our customization for some right. of the things right right i understand yeah, and great. so it's not like that integration is coming so it is a big thing like you have to think okay how i will do integration so so right. people should not like uh, a bit nervous on that kind of part like i should not do integration i should do only administration or development part so that is also development very basic development and if you do it one time then you are confident for every time for whatever integrations you are performing in future great great so yeah nice sharing uh, one last question uh, prashant can you please yeah. brief about uh, integration hub what yeah. is integration uh, hub yeah so integration hub import is like uh, i just have to talk about two different things here integration hub and integration hub import so there are two different thing here okay. but ui is bit of same and uh, the things which are happening on uh, like integration hub import is same kind of integration hub but why i i am talking about this is like people generally is still using transform maps and uh, they they are thinking to use flow somewhere for okay. integration but some somehow there are many integrations where it is not required to create a flow you okay. can use integration hub or integration hub import integration hub import is generally advanced version of integration hub okay. where you can like import your excel csv or xls file you can load there and everything will be created automatically so all the steps which we are performing in transform map that will be gone you don't have to create the transform map you just have to make the mappings 
that's it and okay. you don't have to do anything apart from that and even there is a auto map function where you can click on auto map and auto mapping will complete and there is one more benefit of uh, in comparison to transform map here you can like uh, you have 10 tabs you are having in a single excel so you can upload in 10 different tables using one excel okay you can upload data into 10 different tables so that was introduced in recent version of vancouver so that is okay. really good and people should start using these because uh, we can create a schedule also inside this integration hub import when you have to run those uh, schedule uh, schedule uh, like whenever we have to start this integration between those files uh, which we have loaded and you have to map in target table and as well as we can use spokes also so suppose we have purchased some spokes uh microsoft and jira right. we have right so we can yes, directly yeah so we can directly consume those and it, we can map it directly in our system so this will reduce uh, so much of effort of writing code on back end you can just directly get those data and it, those data will be coming into your target tables directly so you don't have to do any much complications here if it is a straightforward integration okay. but if it is complex one definitely we have other ways in service now like flow we have flow designer you can perform a lot of uh, customization there as well if you want to do but basic integration can be done very easily in this integration hub import so that's okay. why like I generally like create one video in every version, whatever new things they launch in the integration hub import because people should start using those. This is very much useful also because there people are having a lot of confusion because I see a lot of pressures has directly working on integration hub import. So they, they don't like generally going back to transform map if we tell them, okay, transform map is also there. Even though they have learned, but they like integration hub import for importing the data or doing some basic integrations with any of the spoke which is available from the client. Because okay. you know that a spoke is not available as free of cost. So we have so client has to purchase that and then we have to use those spokes. And one more feasibility is there. If suppose you have created the custom spoke. So you can utilize those spokes as well in this integration hub import. So this is one of the useful uh, feature or enhancement, like it has introduced in San Diego, I think, integration okay. hub import. Okay. So from that time, they have modified it a very good way because initially there was some issues, but now they have overcome with all the issues currently, as I see in integration hub import. Great. So, yeah, very much. Uh, well done. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, okay, I have one more question. Uh, sorry, one, one yeah. question left. <laughs> so, uh, let's move to our next question, uh, Prashant. So, like, uh, as you see, that service now is promoting low code and no code. Okay. So, yeah. is it possible that <laughs> we do integration without writing a single piece of code? Is it possible? yeah so like uh in uh, last question like which you have asked so there i have answered this question as well uh, the spokes you, and all these are uh, yeah. direct right there, there is no coding yeah. in such spokes. yeah yeah they, we don't have to use coding you will just get the mappings and then you can directly store those data in our system using our authentication definitely authentication is required for every system whenever we are accessing data from such kind of things so authentication is required, that's it. And no any scripting or code is required. And why ServiceNow is promoting no code uh, things? Because uh, if you see, there is a catalog builder also. It's, it's right. the US. So what purpose uh, for catalog builder is like, suppose they have to build basic catalog items where we don't have any approvals. So those business owners itself can create those catalog items directly using a, a catalog builder and uh, it's not required to use developers also so this is like no code things because you don't have to write any client script or anything you can directly utilize those uh, catalog builder and you can add 
the questions whichever you require in your form right and then you, you can create the catalog item so they are uh, that's why promoting these kind of things because uh, not every time customization is required for everything something can be configurable in service now so we should right. use the configuration thing uh, instead of writing codes we have lot of yeah we have lot of configuration things still we are learning i am learning also every day something new comes and i learn and then i will uh, share those information to our community people as well so that they are also aware okay we are seeing this every time but we don't use it for various things so learning is like uh, never stopping every day we are learning new things and i am also yeah, learning okay. each time i create a video i learn one new thing in service now for the fact i'm right. telling you right yeah it's like that because everything uh, like every time service now is changing it is introducing new new things so we have to learn no other option but uh, we have to keep sharing with the community so that people will understand it uh, properly so i hope uh, prashant this is it these are the all questions which i want to ask to you and uh, you have answered all of these questions very well and uh, again thank you so much for uh, joining us today in weekend especially <laughs> okay and uh, yeah no problem all the best for your future endeavors thank you so much yeah thank you for giving me like such kind of opportunity as like uh, this is my first uh, podcast with you so like uh, I'm, i'm feeling very good at this point of time because uh, this thing has to be introduced to lot of people like uh, they should know what people are conveying and they, they will learn new things from every uh, things right. which you are doing right now with every individuals like previous video you have done with chak tumasi that was that was also awesome like how he were conveying the answers so that was quite good and uh, it is uh, same like feeling is coming to me like i'm right now feeling a bit good because i was nervous when this uh, conversation was started so currently i am uh, more confident Uh, right now so thank you yeah, for uh, this opportunity yeah you, you're most welcome and uh, definitely we will have uh, many more such podcast in future also based on certain you know discrete topics we will pick up uh, i'm planning to pick up few topics and then uh, invite a expert and i ask some questions with respect to that topic so that is also coming along and uh, let's do uh, let's hope uh, that i'll do it uh, soon okay So once yeah. again uh, thank you so much Prashant for joining us today and have a nice day bye yeah bye thanks